Thank you very, very much indeed. And to you, Dr. Wan Sobshin, as well as, of course, to the Director General, Du Chongju. It's a pleasure to be with you again and to Commissioner Sinkevesius, uh, who will be speaking later. Uh, and to, of course, all the participants in the 25th session of the Committee of Forestry. Uh, congratulations for the good work that FAO is doing on forestry and my deep thanks and appreciation for the close collaboration that the Director General has struck up from the day he walked in to FAO with, uh, with our organization, United Nations Environment Program. FAO's uh, new forest uh, state of the forest report, which the Director General referred to and in which we were privileged to be a co-author this year round, this FAO report, tells us that we must take bold actions to reverse the loss of forests. This is because, as we heard the Director General speak to, climate change, biodiversity loss, sustainability goals, these cannot be met without halting deforestation and without protecting what is already there. And COVID-19 has taught us that we need to reinforce uh, for urgent action. A green recovery from the pandemic must promote healthy and restored forests, following the transitions laid out in the Convention for Biological Diversity, Global Biodiversity Outlook that we issued two weeks ago, or that the CBD issued two weeks ago, conserving intact ecosystems, restoring ecosystem, and reversing degradation uh, being priorities. But to make these transitions happen, we need to transform, transform our food systems, which is the largest deforestation cause and which is the largest uh, biodiversity uh, loss cause. And there are many different strands involved in achieving this transformation. Farming must restore, not, uh, not degrade, and that's entirely possible. It needs to restore lands and soils and watersheds and biodiversity. Nature positive production systems, in fact, combine the positive ecological outcomes with positive nutrition and economic outcomes. We've been watching very carefully India's plans and their realization on the ground to move to zero budget natural farming, which so far has been successfully introduced in Andhra Pradesh state. The two, 260,000 hectares farmed under this new approach so far have brought remarkable returns, increased smallholder uh, farmer incomes, and phased out synthetic pesticides and fertilizers. A second point beyond chemicals is agricultural subsidies. We spend in subsidies about 1 million US dollars per minute. Um, and these are often going into uh, important areas for food security, but if we redirect these subsidies to supporting regenerative agriculture, then we can reduce biodiversity loss, reduce land degradation, and reduce forestry loss. So it's really time to prioritize deforestation-free supply chains. And for us to be aware of uh, whether the food we purchase is indeed deforestation-free. And here we at UNEP, we call on industry leaders to set targets for themselves and to hold themselves to account while import markets must send clear signals uh, about the dim commercial future for deforestation tainted products. And they can really collaborate with supply countries to ensure a smooth transition, protecting farmers and ensuring that we leave no one behind. But equally important is what we eat, our own consumption patterns. Governments can influence consumption by integrating sustainability criteria into national dietary guidelines. They can support the consumption of livestock products in vulnerable and undernourished communities especially. They can run consumer awareness campaigns to encourage a plant-rich diet, a diverse diet, and reduce food waste. Implemented systemically, these actions can help deliver not only on goal two, ending hunger, but also on goals 12, uh, sustainable production and consumption, and, um, and many other goals of the SDGs. As we transform the food systems, therefore, we also need to find a way to unlock the private sector, unlock private sector investment to fund forest restoration, forest conservation, and, and overall restocking of ecosystems. And here, 
Red Plus is a ready to go uh, nature based solution that can unlock funding. In fact, UN Red, the flagship partnership with FAO, UNDP, and UNEP, has already mobilized $1 billion US to participating countries, something we're very proud of. Um, UN Red has worked with these countries and they have reported emissions reductions from avoided deforestation and forest degeneration, equivalent to taking 150 million cars off the street for a full year. So with the right incentives for Red Plus, we can do much more. We can unlock a green gigaton of investments, and this will set in motion a transformative process and support forest countries to achieve and to go beyond their NDC targets. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this coming year gives us an opportunity to join biodiversity and the climate agenda and the food agenda under the umbrella of the SDGs and accelerate actions on forests. The post-2020 framework on biodiversity, the nature-based uh, solutions climate agenda, such as Red Plus, are starting to get the attention that they deserve. The UN Food Systems Summit next year will be a rallying point to radically reform our food systems. And the UN Decade for Ecosystem Restoration, which we at UNEP, together with our friends at FAO, are co co-facilitating, seeking to bring in as many partners as possible, uh, once that gets underway next year, provides a real platform to spur investment. And here I'd like to give a specific shout out, and the Director General and I just had a little conversation prior to the start of the meeting, that now on the Great Green Wall 13, no, what is it, 6 billion has already gone in, I believe, and there are several billions lined up over these 13 years, but now is a time for sustained action to really make this happen for this group of countries that needs our attention and support. At the UN Biodiversity Summit just last week, we saw more than 100 heads of state speak to biodiversity loss, make commitments, speak to conservation, speak to benefit sharing, speak to opportunities to stem loss, and speak to the imperative of financing. And with that in our basket already, we know that we're well prepared for the Kunmin Summit, summit and the CBD uh, uh, COP15 that will take place in May next year, if all things go according to plan. And with that then, we must take advantage of this unique confluence of, of factors. The focus on forestry, the focus on food, the focus on climate change, and the focus on sustainability, and yes, the focus on biodiversity. Because if we bring these together, then we really can achieve the sustainable development goal. For that, I thank you for inviting me to speak, and I wish the committee the very best in the work that lies ahead. Thank you.